Hello my dear students, welcome on the psychiatry session. The next interesting psychiatry session is on personality disorders. One request to you, as soon as I start describing a particular personality, don't think to search who is your friend who behaves like this. That's the normal behavior. And you need to differentiate a very important word here is not just personality. The second word is important. It's a disorder. And according to the diagnostic and statistical manual, you need to fulfill, you need to satisfy the criteria which have been decided to diagnose a patient with a particular personality disorder. Second important thing is try to differentiate from schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is one of the illnesses in which you see variable things, very strange things, interesting things. And looking at this particular description, you might feel it's like schizophrenia. But a very important thing is schizophrenia is it's a psychotic disorder. So you need to have psychotic symptoms. You need to have delusions, hallucinations, like symptoms, especially the auditory hallucinations. That's very important. And the schizophrenia should have the episodes of psychosis and the episode should be lasting. This kind of behavior should be lasting for more than six months. Then you label it as schizophrenia. So be aware of these two things. We start discussing the personality disorder. First of all, what is personality? Have you ever thought about it? You might be thinking if the person does this, does that, has got these capacities, these qualities. No. The definition of personality is very interesting. It's predictable response or behavior of the individual to the environment is defined as personality. So what the other people say, what the other people feel, how you behave with the other people and the world in general is the definition of personality, is your response or behavior given to the environment in response to the environment and the personality disorder happens when the features of the personality cause subjective distress to the individual and or to those associated with the individual so there should be a feeling of distress to the individual himself or to the others which are who are associated or there should be significant impairment in social and occupational functioning that's very important and whenever you learn psychiatry and try to look at the diagnostic and statistical manual criteria this is one of the important criteria always is there should be impairment of the social function and the occupational function you have a look at this slide and there are three types of personality disorders cluster a is called odd and eccentric cluster b is called dramatic emotional and erratic and cluster C is called anxious and fearful. Many times they look alike and that's why we need to differentiate. Cluster C, anxious and fearful is easy to differentiate. These people are anxious and they always have a fear. They try to avoid the things. They are likely to be perfectionist. So they are always anxious and they are worried about the thing happens well or no. And they are dependent on someone. So this is totally different. Cluster A is odd or eccentric in which you get paranoid schizoid and schizotypal and in cluster b under dramatic emotional and erratic you get histrionic the english meaning of the word histrionic is strange weird narcissistic who always want to blame others borderline personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder so cluster a concentrated on the column a column column one cluster a is odd or eccentric paranoid schizoid and schizotypal and the characteristic feature of cluster A is there is absence of close relationships they cannot make good friends they cannot make too many friends this includes paranoid personality schizoid personality and schizotypal personality and these disorders are commonly seen in the biologic relatives of schizophrenics this is one of the observations coming to the cluster B dramatic emotional and erratic these people have stormy relations and they get sudden outbursts of anger this is commonly known and this includes histrionic narcissistic borderline and antisocial and in cluster b alcoholism and somatization disorders are commonly found in the relatives of this patient cluster c as we described in the beginning anxious and fearful the common feature the common keyword for this this cluster c is self-doubt the person is never sure about himself and this includes avoidant personality obsessive compulsive personality and dependent personality and anxiety is one of the most important salient features and you always find anxiety disorders in the relatives of these patients i take you to the next slide to describe the first one that's cluster a odd or eccentric 
the first one is paranoid as the word suggest there is tendency of attributing responsibility of own problems or motives to others these people are suspicious untrusting they maintain grudges and there's hidden meaning in the comments or events which they present please remember there are no delusions no hallucinations and a common defense mechanism which is seen is projection is blaming others males are more likely to have paranoid personality disorder the second one is schizoid and the characteristic feature of schizoid is these people are isolated and there's no longing for others they are called loners and there's a social withdrawal and restricted emotional expression again there are no psychotic symptoms there's no delusions no hallucinations the third one is schizotypal these people are eccentric and weird and they display odd behaviors and odd thoughts and odd speech there is a tendency to magical thinking there are superstitious behavior again there is a lack of close friends and they like ill fitting or mismatched clothing this personality is again common in the males so that's about cluster a order eccentric paranoid schizoid and schizotypal we go to cluster b that's dramatic and emotional here you have four types of personalities number 1 is histrionic there is always display of excess emotion attention seeking behavior and colorful behavior they are dramatic extrovert again they don't have long lasting relationships changing relationships and they always want to be in the spotlight and they have got a seductive nature the common defense mechanism histrionic people display are regression somatization conversion and dissociation and the histrionic personality disorder is more common in the females the next one is narcissistic in which there is grandiosity there's over concern with self there's lot of feeling of self self importance and there are fantasies of unlimited wealth and power and love these people are fragile and they are prone to depression very easily and if you criticize them the criticism is always received with indifference or a feeling of rage so that's narcissistic personality disorder on the next slide we have two more from the cluster b the first one is borderline it's called borderline because they have unstable mood and self image the relationships are always in crisis or in chaos they are self detrimental leading to promiscuity gambles overeating substance abuse and they are unstable with the intense personal relationships this personality disorder is common in females and the last one in cluster b is antisocial personality antisocial means not recognizing the rights of others not respecting the rights of others and these persons are likely to be lifelong criminals getting involved in the theft running away and changing the jobs there is non endurance there is non reliability the onset is comparatively at younger age and one of the threads of this antisocial personality may be found in the childhood this child this person when he was a child might have suffered from conduct disorder in the childhood so that's about cluster b dramatic and emotional we go to the last cluster that's cluster c anxious and fearful anxiety is the main issue here there and the self doubt what happens is it's difficult to differentiate between avoidant and dependent and that's why we look at the features avoidant the most important feature is these people are shy timid they fear rejection and they are always anxious and that's why they try to maintain isolation and there's a social withdrawal but they have a desire for affection and acceptance and there's no tendency to accept the change in job or the life situation or the relationships and because they cannot accept the change they try to avoid they tend to avoid i take you to the third one first that's dependent because it it looks like closer one that's why it's easy to differentiate now after avoidant dependent this person gets others to assume the responsibility that's very important to take the decisions this person assigns someone else to take the decisions or to take the responsibility on behalf of him because there's poor self confidence and they cannot express their disagreement there's great fear of having to care for self so if you look at the difference between avoidant and dependent dependent personality disorder this person wants to get his work done 
from somebody else. That's very important because there is a sense of self-doubt. Whereas avoidant person is more shy, timid, is fearing the rejection, he is feared about what he is going to do. So that's the difference. The third one which is shown in the middle on this slide is obsessive compulsive personality disorder. These people are very orderly, they are inflexible, they are very rigid, perfectionist people. They have harsh discipline upbringing and they are stubborn. They usually have lack of sense of humor and there is a feeling of imperfection in whatever they do. Again, they also maintain isolation. They can go for a defense mechanism of reaction formation, undoing and intellectualization. I'll just give you an example of the defense mechanism of undoing. And I hope you remember the obsessive compulsive disorder in which the person repeatedly washes hands or repeatedly checks the gas stoves or the light switches. I hope you remember. So that's obsessive compulsive disorder. These persons may also show those defense mechanisms. And this is more common in the males. After going through all the three clusters, I am just taking you to two or three more slides to have some salient features about each personality. And you have a look at the slide and you will easily understand. Histrionic personality. Histrionic is strange. So what is strange? Number one is dressing. Could be strange. They have a tendency to flirt. They have a tendency to gaze in the mirror repeatedly or try to do the makeup of their face. Crying, laughing, acting out. So it will be strange. And they try to draw the attention. So that's about histrionic. I'm supplying you some more important points. Antisocial. Here the word anti means against the rights of the society. Antisocial personality disorder persons have got the habit or tendency of making stories. They go for malingering, faking, lying. They are more susceptible to have addiction disorders. And the most important issue is there is no sense of guilt and that's called antisocial personality. They are often involved in incarcerations, punishments, suspensions and expulsions and the last stage obviously is murders, rapes, beating and thefts. So that's about antisocial personality. Next one is dependent. Getting others to assume the responsibility is dependent. It's not avoidant. It's dependent on someone else and getting others to assume the responsibility they are indecisive. They don't want to make the decision. They want someone else to do it. Leaving it for others to do is the key word. And there are some quotations. There are some sentences written on this slide. They are interesting. And you are going to enjoy and you are going to remember. Look at the sentences which these people are likely to use. If you ask something, the answer is decide what you want. Or I am afraid. I will take your help. Or I am not good at all in this. Please do it for me. Or, I am sure you would do it for me. Are you getting it? Is making someone else responsible for his own situation. So that's dependent. And lastly, we go for avoidant. What is avoidant? This person is shy, not mixing and trying to avoid. Now, if you ask this person something, the person is not saying you do it for me. The person is just saying this one, oh, not me. Or might say, I am afraid. I don't want to be in. Or might say, well, let me see but I don't think I can do it or might say is it really necessary which means he wants to avoid it there's one more personality which I want to show you that's paranoid personality and it's interesting because there are sentences and then you can remember these sentences and you can link it with a particular personality disorder paranoid is beliefs about others so what paranoid person obviously says is everybody is after me everyone dislikes me they always do it to me everybody hurts me they do not do my work deliberately. Are you getting it? That's called paranoid nature. So these are the various personality disorders. I hope you liked it. You enjoyed it. But not just enjoyment. You should learn from it. Make good effort yourself to differentiate, to write in the form of tables. And it will be easy for you. I wish you good luck for your exams. Best of luck.